Welcome to Kenyon Wanamingo High School for Section 1A Boys Basketball second round action. Neither of these teams had to play in the first round a couple of days ago. Uh, we have the number eight versus number nine seed. Eight seeded Knights of Kenyon Wanamingo coming in at 15 and 11 on the season. Mabel Canton, the Cougars are the number nine seed, 14 and 13 on the season. The road to Minneapolis starting here in Kenyon for these teams. There would be the need for several trips to Rochester before getting to go to the big dance, but one step at a time. Roy Koenig with you on the Mighty 920 KDHL in Faribault, 97.9 FM, and as always, free on the KDHL app. If you don't have that app downloaded to your phone, what are you waiting for? Get the app downloaded and take us with you wherever you go. Today's game is brought to you by Faribault Foods by H&R Block, Faribault, Watana, and Lakeville, Security State Bank of Kenyon, by Amesbury Truth, Federated Mutual Insurance Company, by First United Bank, Milo Peterson Ford, and by Kenyon Ace Hardware. Coming up on our pregame show, we'll look at the keys to the game, we'll get to the starting lineups, and top of the hour is the opening tap Kenyon Wanamingo and Mabel Canton in the Section 1A Boys Basketball Playoffs. The winner advances to a game on Monday at the Mayo Civic Auditorium in Rochester, likely to play the number one seed, go for conference champion, and number five rated in the state Blooming Prairie. BP is playing tonight against Bethlehem Academy, and they are the top seed in this section. So the number eight versus number nine seed, the winner usually knows or the winner knows they will usually be facing the top seed in the next round, and that will be the case, uh, or that could be the case, should BP take care of business against BA this evening. I'll have more for you on the pregame show in just a moment on the Mighty 920 KBHL. Fairbow Foods has been a pillar of the Fairbow community since 1895. As a leading manufacturer of high-quality canned foods, they're dedicated to providing wholesome and delicious recipe-ready food. Keep your pantry stocked with canned beans and vegetables for easy meals at your fingertips. Use Mrs. Grimes' beans in your favorite soups, chilies, or tacos. And butter kernel vegetables as a side dish your family will love. For more meal inspiration, visit MrsGrimesBeans.com or ButterKernel.com. H&R Block offices in Oatana, Faribault, and Lakeville remind you now is the time to get your paperwork in order for tax season. Book your appointment at one of the offices where in-person or drop-off filing is available. No computer program can ask every single possible tax question. The tax professionals in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana average 10 years experience, and you can request the same preparer every year. File your way at H&R Block offices in Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. We're getting set for the national anthem after we get the starting lineups all right <laughs> all the fans all the fans were queued up for the national anthem but oh they're going to introduce the entire teams for both sides well i'll tell you what that gives me a chance to get you the keys to the game presented by milo peterson ford keys to the game from coach russell larson of mabel canton key to the game is rebounding and free throw shooting key to the game for brent lurkin for the knights of kenyon wanamingo he looks at points in the paint as one of the keys to today's game Keys to the game brought to you by Milo Peterson Ford. And now for your starting lineups in today's game, Mabel Canton comes in as the number nine seed, a record of 14 and 13 on the season. They'll be starting a junior, number two, Tyler Larson, a senior, number three, Riley Snell, a sophomore, number four, Isaac Underbaki, and a senior, number five, Caden Tollipsrud, as well as a senior, number 21, Hayden Erickson. So the starters for Mabel Canton are Larson, Snell, Underbaki, Tolofsrud, and Erickson. The head coach is Russell Larson, assisted by Paul Tolofsrud. Again, 14 and 13 on the season, nine and 10 in the Southeast Conference, finishing in third place on the east side. For the Kenyon Wanamingo Knights, their starters today will include a 5'9 junior guard, number five, Tanner Hadeen, 
a six foot senior forward, number 14, Zach Mason, a six foot two senior guard, number 15, Colton Steberg, a 5'11 eighth grade forward, number 21, Eli Hedin, and a six foot two junior forward, number 24, Joe Mills. Assistant coaches are Brady Anfinson and Paul Dusna, and the head coach for the Kenyon Wanamingo Knights is Brent Lurkin, a record of 15 and 11, 10 and 5 in the Gopher Conference East, coming in second place in the Gopher Conference East. The other games that are going on tonight after Bethlehem Academy beat Leroy Ostrander in a tight game a couple of days ago, it is BA at top seed Blooming Prairie. The winner of that game plays the winner of this game Monday night at 6 at the Auditorium in Rochester. Number four seed Southland is hosting Wabashaw Kellogg. Wabashaw Kellogg beat the Rochester STEM School a couple of days ago. Southland hosting Wabashaw Kellogg. Lyle Pacelli is playing at number five seed Kingsland tonight. On the lower side of the bracket is Lanesboro, who beat Hayfield 63 to 48 in the first round. Lanesboro is at number two seed, Spring Grove. Houston, number 10 seed, playing at number seven seed, Fillmore Central. Glenville Emmons, who beat Grand Meadows 77 to 48 in the first round. They're playing at number three seed, Rushford Peterson. And number 11 seed, Schaefer Academy, is at number six seed, Goodhue for tonight's final game. Eight games going on today in Section 1A basketball. Four of those teams are rated in the latest poll from the Minnesota Basketball News. Blooming Prairie is the number five rated team in the state. They come in with a 25 and two record into the postseason. Spring Grove, the number two seed, is the number 13 rated team in the state. They come in with a 24 and three record. Rushford Peterson, the number three seed, is the 18th rated team in the state. They're 20 and seven. And Southland, the number four seed, is actually the number 12 ranked team in the state. And they are a higher ranked team, even if they're a lower seed than a couple of those clubs. Southland at 20 and five on the season. So some very good records among those top four teams. And of course, uh, these teams are looking to pull off some upsets down the road. But first of all, number eight, Kenyon Wanamingo, and number nine, Mabel Canton, uh, have to play out their first, uh, their first game here this evening. So we've got the lineups. Hedin, Mason, Steberg, Hedin, and Mills for Kenyon Wanamingo. Larson, Snell, Underbaki, Tolofsrud, and Erickson for Mabel Canton. And uh, now we will have the national anthem performed by the Kenyon Wanamingo Band. And that'll be a treat to get here a live band presenting our national anthem. starting lineups tonight by the way brought to you by Kenyon Ace Hardware if you need to get it done Kenyon Ace Hardware is where to go to get your questions answered and get all the supplies you need Kenyon Ace Hardware starting lineups Hedin Mason Steberg Hedin and Mills for Kenyon Wanamingo dressed in red for tonight's game black letters and numbers white trim and for Mabel Canton Larson Snell Underbaki Tolofsrud and Erickson they're dressed in white with blue numbers trimmed in red. Cougars across the front of their jerseys in block lettering. It's Knights and Cougars here from the castle. Kenyon Wanamingo Knights. It'll be Mabel Canton controlling the opening tap and we are underway with playoff basketball here at Kenyon. Roy Koenig on the call on KDHL, the Mighty 920, KDHL, Faribault, Minnesota. 
pulling up at the free throw line and drilling the first shot of the game is Tolis Root. So Mabel Canton puts on some full court pressure. Nice, strong pass to mid court to Mills, who then turned and got it into the front court. Hedin, that's Tanner, swings it over left side, trying to drive up the lane, split through the defense, heave up a shot that misses, goes out of bounds. There was an awful lot of contact as Zachary Mason was going through the lane. No whistle either way. And the ball lost out of bounds on the missed shot. So Mabel Canton with their second possession of the game. Half-court defense, uh, man for man, is uh, put on by Kenyon Wanamingo. A little bump, a little floater, and Underbaki puts it in. It's 4-0 Cougars. Again, that backcourt pressure being put on. Kenyon Wanamingo gets up to the timeline, tosses it into the front court to Eli Hedin. Into the corner to Mills, goes baseline, skips it along to Steberg, and Steberg goes to Tanner Hedin. A lot of time to shoot, still about 15 seconds to go on that 35-second shot clock that went into effect this year in Minnesota high school ball. Now down to 10 to shoot. Looking around somewhere to go with the ball is Eli. He gets the ball to uh, Steberg. Steberg, now here's the deal. Steberg just lost it out of bounds. It was touched by Mabel Canton. It's Kenyon Wanamingo ball, but there's only five seconds to go on the shot clock. This is a big time when that uh, shot clock comes into play as well. A lot of late half, late game situations. Inbound, taken, Mason drives in, stripped out of his hands. <laughs> now with two seconds to go, Kenyon Wanamingo gets the front court inbound, but two, two seconds on the shot clock. Coach Lurkin gets up to let his team know that. A catch, a pass, a shot, away in time. It missed, and it's rebounded by Tolifsrud. So they did get the shot away fine, even with just a couple of seconds to go. Good uh, work by the team to know that. Three-pointer on its way. This misses, and that'll go out of bounds off the missed shot. Mabel Canton in the right corner, missing that three-point try. So a 4-0 lead for the Cougars, a minute and a half in. Kenyon Wanamingo inbounds against that heavy backcourt pressure. Weaving his way through it is Hadeen. Hadeen, then a pass across. Great assist goes to Eli Hadeen from Joe Mills. And it is 4-2, Mabel Canton. Cougars look to answer quickly. A little fake by Erickson. Now a three-pointer on its way by Underbach. He missed it. And that rebound was taken down by Zach Mason. Spin move at the lane in the other end. It is Eli Hadeen on the basket. We are even at four points apiece. About two minutes into the first half. Find the back dribble by Snell. Gets the ball out to Underbach. Mabel Canton going from right to left in front of me here at the castle. Three-pointer from the left side. That skims off the rim. It is jabbed out and taken by Mabel Canton. And then a shot misses. That rebound is by Mason. So after making their first couple of shots, Mabel Canton struggling a little bit more so now. They've missed three threes in a row. In the lane, that shot misses. Rebound torn down by Larson. We stay tied at four, approaching the three-minute mark, three minutes into this first half of play. Mabel Canton under Bakke, gets the ball to Snell, top of the key, back to under Bakke, right side. He'll drive around a player, pull up from 16, miss on the shot. Rebound is by Hedin. They've missed about four or five in a row since making their first two shots. From the left corner, that shot is short. Offensive rebound, some contact, no call. And the rebound is taken by Mabel Canton. Three-pointer from the left corner for the uh, Cougars, and Larson hits it. It is seven to four, Mabel Canton, three and a half minutes in. So Mabel Canton had gone cold. They finally connect on a three. Larson hit that shot. Larson averages 10 points a game. There was a little drive. He kind of broke the ankles of the uh, Mabel Canton defender. Offensive rebound by, uh, rebound by Steberg. He banks it up and in. It is 7-6. Mabel Canton and the Cougars have the basketball. Driving in, getting hemmed in along the baseline, finding Underbach. He opened for the three. That misses. Rebound right into the hands of Hedin. A couple of rebounds for Hedin. One of the keys to the game, Milo Peterson Ford keys to the game, was rebounding. And early on, Kenyon Wanamingo doing a nice job rebounding. Although that miss is uh, rebounded by Underbach. And the Cougars into the front court. Here's a stop and pop three. That misses. There's a rebound by Mills. Mabel Canton is now one for six on three-point shooting. Big part of their offense from the looks of things. Now Kenyon Wanamingo answers with a three. That's Eli Hadeen 
and a 9-7 lead for the Knights, 13 and a half to go in the first half. Knights settle back into that half-court defense, taking his time into the front court as Snell. Passes on the right side. Stats of the game, by the way, H&R Block. They know their numbers at H&R Block. Fair below with Town of Lakeville. Cougars move the ball around. Find a player top of the key, 13 to shoot. Left side to Larson, now in the corner with Snell. A three-pointer from the left wing. Misses. <laughs> Ricocheted right into the awaiting arms of Mason, who already has three rebounds in the game. 9-7 lead for Kenyon Wanamingo. A little drop pass now, top of the key. Mason for three. Comes off the rim. Rebounded by Hedin. And then a shot missed in close, and that rebound was grabbed by Tolofsrud. 9-7, Kenyon Wanamingo. There's a runner up the lane. Finger roll didn't go. Trying to get his own rebound was uh, Tolofsrud. It dropped off of his hands, however. Falls out of bounds. It's Kenyon Wanamingo basketball. Big thanks as well to um, our halftime sponsor, Security State Bank of Kenyon. We'll review some of the bracket notes, uh, certainly review the H&R Block stats of the game come halftime, but we'll take a look at some, what's going on in some of the other brackets as well. Don't know if I'll have scores for you, but certainly you can check that out on the KDHL app later on, all those score updates. A straight on three is up and in by Aldorfer. Aldorfer checked into the game. And he drills the three. He was just to the left of the top of the key. 12-7, Kenyon Wanamingo. Pass left side. Here's a three-pointer on its way. Too strong. Weak side rebound. Aldorfer grabs the ball. Off the miss. Now one for eight on three-point shooting for Mabel Canton. Neither coach talked about the three-point shooting as a big key. But there's another three for Hedin. He's got two threes. It is an 11-0 run for Kenyon Wanamingo. We've got a timeout on the floor. Timeout taken by Mabel Canton. Kenyon Wanamingo leads 15-7, 11-52 to go in the first half on the Mighty 920. KDHL in Fairbo. The Security State Bank of Kenyon is celebrating their 90th year in business. Born in 1934 out of the Great Depression failure of three independent banks, Security State Bank of Kenyon was chartered July 23rd, 1934 and has been delivering community banking services ever since. Still family owned and operated, Security State Bank of Kenyon is dedicated to the financial needs of area farmers, businesses, and individuals. The Security State Bank of Kenyon says personal service, it's our style. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. So Mabel Canton takes the first time out of the game in an 11-0 run for Kenyon Wanamingo. These two teams did not meet in the regular season, this season or last season. And if you go back a few seasons, Kenyon Wanamingo was a double-A team. There wouldn't be any reason to schedule Mabel Canton but they did not meet this season nor last. Mabel Canton with the ball, 15-7, Kenyon Wanamingo lead, 11 and a half to go in the first half. A pass deflected away into the backcourt, but it was touched, so no turnover, no uh, over and back or turnover. Here's a three-pointer, and that one misses everything. Rebounded by Hedin. That rebound was taken by Tanner Hedin. Into the front court holding the ball is Eli Hedin. Hands that off to Steberg. Steberg to Waldorfer, top of the key. Good ball movement by the Knights. Driving in is Tanner Hedin. Kicks it out. Little head fake by Mills. Into the right corner. A three. It's good from the right corner by Steberg. Three players have threes. Kenyon Wanamingo, by my count, is four for seven on three-point shooting. Stats of the game, a service of H&R Block, Owatonna Faribault Lakeville. 18 seven nights. Here's a three-pointer. That's off the front of the rim. Offensive rebound by Mabel Canton. Inside, a runner to the basket is good for Underbaki. That ends a 14-0 run by Kenyon Wanamingo. It's still 18 to nine nights, nine, uh, 10 and a half to go in the first half. 18 9 Knights. Leaner at the other end. It's good. And that was by Mills. Joe Mills has his first points. It's 20 to 9. Kenyon Wanamingo. Under Baki, a sophomore, averages 12 points a game. Kicks that out to Snell outside the arc. Hands it off to Under Baki. Under Baki sees an opening. He'll dribble, drive, float, shoot, miss, draw the contact. And he'll be going to the free throw line for our first free throws of the game. Foul is on, Tanner Hedin, his first, team's first. 
At the line under Baki, 12.7 rebounds, five assists per game. The sophomore. Deep knee bend on the first of his two shots, rims out. 10.07 to go in the first half, 20 to nine, Kenyon Wanamingo. Subs are in for the Knights, Bauer enters. Mason is back into the game. And who's the other one? Second free throw misses, offensive rebound, however. A straight on three, missed it, tap, offensive rebound. From the left corner, miss, a tap, and tapped off the backboard, fighting for the ball. There's a foul. The ball's going to belong to Kenyon Wanamingo. So there was a couple of misses in there, and then did they whistle a foul or not? Well, the ball belonged. Oh, oh, there, there was a foul. There was a foul on Kenyon Wanamingo. They pointed the wrong way. He pointed as if it was night basketball. It's not. The inbound, the shot misses, and that rebound is grabbed by Bauer just into the game. Mabel Canton has gone ice cold shooting the, the ball. 20 to 9 Knights. Weaving his way in, missing the shot. Offensive rebound right there is Mills. Mills offensive rebound, put back basket. It's now 22 to 9. Kenyon Wanamingo, nine and a half to play in the first half. On the dribble is Underbaki. The other new player in the game, by the way, was Logan Carroll. Carroll, one of the new players in the game for Kenyon Wanamingo. Shot short, rebound, great body positioning by Mason to get that rebound. And it's Kenyon Wanamingo ball with 9-10 to play in the first half. Steebird drives inside the arc. He hands it off to Carroll. Carroll fakes, looks, shoots from the free throw line. The lefty drills it. And the Knights can't miss. Mabel Canton can't hit a shot. And it's 24-9. This is a 20-2 run. It was 7-4 at one point in favor of Mabel Canton. Now it's 24-9, Kenyon Wanamingo. Coming out of the right corner is Snell. Gives that ball to Larson. Larson for three. High off the rim. Bauer gets the rebound. Kenyon Wanamingo is dominating the boards. Looking inside, low post, muscling his way in. Turn around, high off the window. Zach Mason gets into the scorebook. It's now 26 to nine nights. Keys to the game, rebounding is what Coach Larson said for Mabel Canton, and the rebounding edge is a huge advantage for Kenyon Wanamingo. Three-pointer in and out. There were three nights there to rebound that ball, and no one for Mabel Canton went crashing to the boards on that shot. Top of the key, head fake, drive. And banked up and in left hand Mason to the hoop. It's 28 to 9, and Mabel Canton is forced to take another timeout. They take a full timeout. They're in trouble here. 28 to 9. Kenyon Wanamingo, just under eight minutes to play in the first half on the Mighty 920 KDHL in Faribault. Back in the 1920s, when an entrepreneur came to town to seek their dream, they needed three things, a place to stay, a knowledgeable banker, and an account with First United Bank. Today, First United Bank in Faribault and Owatonna is still helping young people who are starting out. First United Bank has grown to the size it is today by giving sound financial advice and personal service to its customers for over 100 years. That's why First United Bank is important for young families today. At First United Bank, they didn't invent personal service, they just never forgot got it. Member FDIC. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. Mighty 920 KDHL thrilled to bring you playoff basketball. What a great time of season it is. We're getting our plans together for coverage of the state high school boys basketball tournament as well. And we'll certainly be cluing you in on that when those details come together and teams come together. Be watching the KDHL radio.com website. Download the app and find out what's coming up for the state tournament. 28 to 9, Kenyon Wanamingo with under eight minutes to play in the first half. Mabel Canton with the ball, working around a lot. They're looking for a shot. They're looking for a shot they can make. They've gone ice cold, threading the pass inside. That might be our first turnover of the game. And it goes in favor of Kenyon Wanamingo. Oh, going for the reverse layup, missed it. Ball tapped out of bounds ultimately by Mabel Canton. So Kenyon Wanamingo will maintain the ball. 10 points already for Eli Hadeen. 
He leads the way. Five for Steberg. Four points on the underside on the other side for Underbaki as the leading scorer thus far for Mabel Canton. But uh, Kenyon Wanamingo has everything going their way after a, a slow start, but it wasn't slow for very long. Three-pointer off the rim, tap out, tap out, goes off a player's head. The Knights get it. There's a three-point try. That misses. Rebound once again, Kenyon Wanamingo. Right side, three-pointer on its way. It's nothing but net. Nothing but net. And Mason, as he's jogging up the floor, flashes three fingers on his hand. It's 31-9, to Kenyon Wanamingo. A jump stop in the lane, that doesn't go. Getting his own rebound and then putting it up and through is Tolopsrud. And now 31 to 11, a 20 point lead. So after Kenyon Wanamingo went on a 14-0 run, they, they followed that up with a 13-0 run after the one basket in between that long stretch that Mabel Canton converted on. Taking it up through traffic, just straight down the lane, finding his way through is Steberg. It's 33 to 11, 6.25 to play in the first half. Stats of the game, H&R Block, Owatonna, Faribault, and Lakeville. Halftime report coming up thanks to Security State Bank of Kenyon. There's a shot that misses. The rebound is rolled out and controlled by number, uh, let's see, Tolipsru gets that rebound. Inside missed shot. And that rebound is deflected into the hands of Steberg off the miss by Mabel Canton. Under six to play first half in the lane. Similarly to the last possession, Steberg knifes his way through. It's 35-11, Kenyon Wanamingo. This is the eight versus nine seeded game and Kenyon Wanamingo has come out with their hair on fire. With the ball now is Tolif Srud. He'll center that for under Baki, top of the key outside the lane. He'll drive left hand, runner through, misses, draws the foul and under Baki who uh, 0 for 2 at the free throw line will get two more opportunities here. As the foul called on Bauer, his first, team's third, no fouls yet against Mabel Kent. 5.32 to go first half. First free throw on its way, it's good. This is Underbaki at the line, free throw made, he's got five points, he averages 12 points a game. So Tolofsrud, a senior for Mabel Canton averages 27 points per game. He's got four so far. So both free throws are made. 35 13, five and a half to go first half. Nice job. And then a great pass. Finishing the play is Hedin off of an excellent pass from Mason right through that defense. A skip pass. He found. Um, Hadeen down low to bank it up and in. That's Eli Hadeen, the eighth grader. Is that right? I've got to double check my roster. <laughs> He's having a great game. 37-13. Knights, a three-pointer. That one's short. Following it, getting his own rebound, missing another rebound up and off. There'll be free throws coming up here for Erickson. And it was uh, Snell who got the rebound, and then Erickson got the subsequent rebound. Drew the foul on Zach Mason, his second, team's fourth. And first shot is good at the line is Erickson, seven points per game. That's his first point of the night. Aldorfer checks back into the game for Kenyon Wanamingo. 37-14 nights under five minutes to play in the first half. Roy with you here on the Mighty 920 KDHL. Second free throw short right into the awaiting hands of Steberg. There's some very impressive rebound numbers for Kenyon Wanamingo. We'll get to that at the Security State Bank of Kenyon halftime report, the H&R Block stats of the game. Tanner Hedin works it outside. Now it's Steberg. He goes back to Tanner. Tanner drives, stops, kicks it out. Aldorfer for three. Around and through. Aldorfer, that hit the front of the rim, ricocheted to the backboard, and then settled in. 40 to 14 nights, four and a half to play first half. Well, uh, hesitation move by Larson, and a foul on the floor whistled against Kenyon Wanamingo. This will be the fifth on the Knights. No shots coming here. The foul, I think, is on Tanner Hedin, which is his second. Fifth foul on the team. Two players do have two fouls each, Tanner Hedin and Zach Mason. Not a single foul whistled on Mabel Canton to this point. Not that there should be, but uh, no fouls called yet on the Cougars. Uh, that's Tolofsrud, new into the game. Uh, 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 Kale Tolofsrud. There's a Caden Tolofsrud as well. Ball tossed out to Snell. They've got 10 to shoot. 
Snell, a little shake and bake, passes right side, three-pointer, and for the first time in a long time, they find a three-point shot. Underbaki hit it from the right wing, 40-17, to 17, Kenyon Wanamingo, under four to play in the first half. Aldorfer tosses corner, baseline move, then the ball comes out to Hadeen. Eli, turn around, fade away in the lane, around, and I tell you what, that friendly rim, they know their rim here at Kenyon Wanamingo because the Knights have played it off the front of the rim, off the back of the backboard, and it's 42-17 to 17 Knights with 3.30 to go in the first half. That ball comes out to Erickson. Erickson gives to Underbaki. He'll take the three and knock it through. So back-to-back -back threes for him. And now a timeout is taken by Kenyon Wanamingo. It'll be their first timeout of the game. It gives us a chance to take a little break as well. 42 to 20. Kenyon Wanamingo in the driver's seat late first half. H&R Block offices in Oatana, Faribault, and Lakeville remind you now is the time to get your paperwork in order for tax season. Book your appointment at one of the offices where in-person or drop-off filing is available. No computer program can ask every single possible tax question. The tax professionals in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana average 10 years experience, and you can request the same preparer every year. File your way at H&R Block offices in Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. Kenyon Wanamingo is shooting better than 50% on three-pointers. By my unofficial stats, H&R Block, you'll get your official numbers, but I'll try to deliver you some uh, interesting stats that might not be uh, official, but will give you an idea of how this game has gone. So far, the Knights way 42 to 20, 315 to play in the first half. They almost lose the ball. Going for the steal, Mabel Canton missed out on it. Now inside is Mills, waits for his defender to fly by, and again... Kenyon Wanamingo gets a friendly bounce. The ball wasn't obviously going through, but it went off the rim. It went off the backboard. It went through. Meanwhile, at the other end, taking it hard into some traffic is Caden Tolifsrud, and he hits. It's 44-22 Knights under three minutes to play in the first half. Mabel Canton with a steal. They're turning up the defensive pressure. Under Baki at the other end with the runner puts it up and through. A little 6-2 run right now for um, for the uh, Cougars. Ball jab three, back-to-back -back turnovers by Kenyon Wanamingo. Still a 20-point game, but there's lots of basketball left tonight, folks. Three-pointer is hit by Caden Tolipsrud, and all of a sudden another timeout is needed by Kenyon Wanamingo. These coaches are not afraid to burn their timeouts in the first half. It's been that kind of a swing in momentum in this game. It's 44-27 here at the Castle. Kenyon Wanamingo on top. More basketball in a moment on the Mighty 920 KDHL. Every part counts at Amesbury Truth. And the most important one is the part you'll play when you join their team. As the leading provider of window and door products in North America, Amesbury Truth has a part for you. Right now, they're hiring, and those positions come with competitive wages, benefits, and plenty of opportunities, too. So you never stop growing. Isn't it time you open the door to a career at Amesbury Truth? Get details and apply online at amesburytruth.com slash careers. We have a great crowd here at the castle. Kenyon Wanamingo hosting Mabel Canton in this second round playoff game. And the Knights turn the ball over. Actually, the Knights maintain the ball, but a tie up. So that'll reverse the possession arrow. So no turnover, but the Cougars did force a tie up. So credit to them as they try to uh, cut into this big deficit. So with the basketball, the ball's jabbed free from behind. It stays night basketball. And triggering it in will be Eli Hadeen, the eighth grader. Throws it into the front court to uh, Bauer. 2.15 to play first half, 44-27. We'll review stats, and uh, we've got quite a few of them to go through from this first half of uh, pretty exciting basketball. Here's a long three, high off the rim, and rebounded by... Um, well, I know who it's rebounded by, but hold on. A play at the other end is up and in for Tolipsrud. 9-0 run. Uh, it was uh, Hirschberger who made a nice play, rebounding the ball on the missed shot by Kenyon Wanamingo. And as he was falling her down, he got it to his teammate. Mabel Canton nearly comes up with the steal. Now Bauer in the lane. Bauer hits and gets fouled. 
first foul of the game against Mabel Canton, and it's an and one opportunity. As a result, it also ends a 9-0 run by Mabel Canton trying to climb back into this game. The foul on Tyler Larson is his first and the team's first with 93 seconds to go in the first half. At the line is Bauer, first free throw of the ball game for Kenyon Wanamingo. They miss it. They get the offensive rebound. And Tanner Hedin turns around and lofts it back up and in. That is a four-point possession. And at the other end, they lose the ball out of bounds. I think that might actually be a turnover on Mabel Canton. So it was a four-point possession for Kenyon Wanamingo on the made basket, the missed free throw, but the putback on the offensive rebound by Tanner Hedin. Backcourt pressure put on by Mabel Canton. Tanner Adine just charges his way forward into the front court. Skips it forward to Mills. Mills, offensive foul on Joe Mills. Third turnover of the first half by Kenyon Wanamingo, which the turnover numbers are dazzlingly low for both clubs. 117 to play first half, 48-29 Kenyon Wanamingo. I'm going to have to go through my notes for what the biggest lead was for the Knights, but we'll get to that as part of the Security State Bank of Kenyon halftime show. And now the ball jabbed free by Tanner Hedin, but tracking it down with Snell before the uh, Knights could get to it. Snell drives, passes, and that goes off somebody's leg. Right back to Snell. Hirschberger puts it out for a three-point try. Missed. The rebound is... Kenyon Wanamingo, I believe that was Bauer getting that rebound, and now Bauer up the lane draws a foul, and he'll go to the line. 48 seconds to go in the first half, 48 points on the board for Kenyon Wanamingo. I'm going to have to find my, um, got it right here, the schedules. It's a big first half scoring-wise here for the Knights. Free throw. <laughs> it went around the rim two times. It went around the rim two times. It just was out for a Sunday cruise. And then the ball goes through for Oliver Bauer, 49-29. He hit them both. A 50-point first half for the Knights. 50-29, to 29, 45 seconds to go in the first half. Driving, stopping is uh, Snell. They work the ball around. A pull of Srood for three off the front of the rim. Rebounded and almost lost by Hedin but he got it, that was uh, Eli Hedin. Long pass ahead, there's a second between the shot clock and the game clock, about 25 seconds to go first half. 21 point lead for the Knights in this 1A playoff uh, second round game. Straight on look for uh, Steberg, he'll hand it off. Now it's handed to Eli Hedin, and there's a second offensive foul on Kenyon Wanamingo. It's the first foul on Eli Hedin. And it is the seventh foul, but this is an offensive foul, so there's no free throws coming. Yeah, Eli Hedin, an eighth grader, looking very poised and mature out there, even though he did get tagged with that uh, foul. He's at 14 points in the first half. No shot clock at this point, under 10 seconds to play. Mabel Canton with the ball, 50 to 29 nights. That ball is kicked out for Hirschberger. He drives in. He puts it up, missed it. Own rebound, up, around, and off. So Hirschberger got his own rebound on the miss, and at the buzzer, it looked good coming off of his hands, but it missed, and we go to the half with Kenyon Wanamingo up 50 to 29 over Mabel Canton. What a first half, kind of a frantic first half at times, and a pretty quick first half as we've just barely hit 730, and we take a break. It's 50 to 29 as we get into the Security State Bank of Kenyon halftime report. I want to say thanks again to Kenyon Ace Hardware presenting our starting lineups of the game and Milo Peterson Ford with those keys to the game. We'll review those as we move into the halftime report as well. Back to the castle in Kenyon in a moment on the Mighty 920 KDHL, Faribault, Minnesota. Federated Mutual Insurance Company is passionate about the care and enrichment of the next generation. At the heart of our charitable focus is youth mentoring and our support of Big Brothers Big Sisters. We are proud of our employees who are currently volunteering to be a big brother, big sister, big couple, or a big family, and yet there are hundreds of children still waiting for a big. Ignite your year. Empower potential today. Consider this your personal invitation to learn more about Big Brothers Big Sisters. Together, we can make a difference. Band is warming up a little bit. There we go. We'll have a little bit of band music here. We'll go through some stats and more things, most certainly. One of the joys of high school sports is when the high school band is here 
to perform at a game. 50 to 29, Kenyon Wanamingo on the Security State Bank of Kenyon halftime report. All right, I want to figure out what the biggest lead was. Looks like 26. Just kind of looking at some other, it was 24 there. And a three and a three. So I think 26, unofficially 26 points is the biggest lead that Kenyon Wanamingo had in the first half. Three point shooting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of 13, three point shooting for Kenyon Wanamingo. For Mabel Canton, one, two, three, four. Four out of 19 on three point shooting for Mabel Canton. Interestingly enough, the coach Brent Lurkin said that inside baskets, the inside, the points in the paint would be huge. And Kenyon Wanamingo has had some great penetrating plays. Steberg, I believe it was, had a couple in a row. We've had some offensive rebounds, put back baskets by Joe Mills. So those Milo Peterson Ford keys to the game from the Kenyon Wanamingo perspective, points in the paint, very true. At the same time, Coach Larson for Mabel Canton talked about rebounding being a big key from his perspective. And the rebounding, you're just going to have to live with me here as I kind of add it up uh, live on air. Uh, 10, that's 15, uh, 20, I'm going to say about 23 rebounds for Kenyon Wanamingo. I've got five for Mason to lead the way four for Hedin, and then several with three apiece. But anyhow, I'm adding up 23 rebounds in the first half for Kenyon Wanamingo. And on the other side, 9, 10, 13, about 15 rebounds for Mabel Canton. So Coach Larson said rebounding would be key, and his team has not rebounded with Kenyon Wanamingo. While I don't have the distinction of second chance points, uh, I can only keep track of so many stats. The Knights have quite a few. I can think of Tanner Hedin on the missed free throw and the putback. Joe Mills, I think a couple of his baskets are offensive rebound putback baskets. So rebounding and second chance in the paint points for Kenyon Wanamingo have been pretty darn big in this first half. And then um, the uh, turnover is really not a factor. I've got three turnovers on Kenyon Wanamingo and two on Mabel Canton. So turnover is not a factor. As far as the uh, first half points in this game, two for Tanner Hedin, two for Carroll, six points for Aldorfer off the bench, seven points for Mason in the first half. Steberg ends up with nine points in the first half, 14 first half points for the eighth grader, Eli Hedin, six points for Mills, and four points for Bauer. I'm just going top to bottom in my scorebook. Tyler Larson, three points for Mabel Canton. 14 points for Underbaki. 11 points for Caden Tolofsrud. He was pretty quiet for a while, but now he's a little bit more on pace for what he does, which is 27 points per game. He's at 11 points at halftime. And one point for Erickson. Only four players have scored for Mabel Canton while four, five, six, seven, eight players have scored for Kenyon Wanamingo. It is 50 to 29, Kenyon Wanamingo, who trailed 4-0 and 7-4, then went on a 14-0 run, surrendered a basket, and followed that up with a 13-0 run. All in all, a 27-2 run early on in the first half that took us past the halfway point of the first half as well. A 27 to two Kenyon Wanamingo run, a huge part of how the first half ended up as it did with the Knights up 50 to 29. I'll go through the brackets of the uh, other Southeastern Minnesota boys basketball tournaments in a moment. On the Mighty 920 KDHL, you're listening to the Security State Bank of Kenyon Halftime Report. Kenyon Wanamingo, 50, and uh, Mabel Canton, 29. Milo Peterson Ford in Kenyon has been family owned and operated since 1961. They value every single customer. More new vehicles are arriving on their lot every day. An excellent selection of pre-enjoyed vehicles are available 
No pressure there either. Speaking of pressure, remember Milo Peterson Ford is a place to go for tires for your vehicles also. They have all the name brands. Parts and service department is second to none at Milo Peterson Ford, Highway 56 North, Kenyon. So even though we're at 50 points at the midway point here of the ball game for Kenyon Wanamingo, it doesn't necessarily mean that we'll be flirting with 100 by the end of the game. But Kenyon Wanamingo on the season did score 90 points against the Rochester STEM School back in mid-December. Uh, they put up 80 against Bethlehem Academy in early January. 83 points against Triton. That was a wild game January 23rd, 83-81. The Knights came away with the win. They scored 73 points against Blooming Prairie, winning by 13 on Monday, January 29th. Um, I think that was the second of the back-to-back -back losses for Blooming Prairie. And take note, the winner of this game is probably going to be playing Blooming Prairie on Monday night at the Auditorium in Rochester in the next round. So those are some of the big point totals that Kenyon Wanamingo has put up. And this Mabel Canton team is certainly... Um, certainly capable. They averaged 70 points a game on the season. They scored 103 points against the Rochester STEM School, hit 90 plus against Fillmore Central, 90 on the nose against Lanesboro, 92 against Leroy Ostrander. So Mabel Canton definitely has the ability to score. They just went ice cold for an extended time of the first half in this game. All right, here are some of the other brackets and how things have developed. In 1A basketball, Blooming Prairie is playing host to Bethlehem Academy tonight. BA beat Leroy Ostrander a couple of days ago, uh, probably on Monday, actually, right? No games on Tuesday. Uh, so BA is at BP tonight. Wabashaw Kellogg, who beat the Rochester STEM School there at Southland tonight. Lyle Pacelli at Kingsland. And on the other half of the bracket, Lanesboro at Spring Grove. Houston at Fillmore Central, Glenville Lemons at Rushford Peterson, and Schaefer Academy is playing at Goodview in 1A. In the 1AA boys basketball, they, they're getting their first round of games in today. Albert Lee out of the Big Nine plays in 1AA. They're at top seed and number three rated in the state Lake City. Also tonight, St. Charles at Pine Island, Plainview Elgin Millville at La Crescent, Triton is at Sombrota Mazeppa. On the other side of the bracket, Chatfield at number seven rated and number two seed Caledonia. Rochester Lourd at Winona Cotter Hope Lutheran. Randolph is at number 12 rated Cannon Falls, the third seed. Leroy Ost I should say, um, yeah, Randolph at Cannon Falls. Dover Yoda at Lewiston Altura in a one double A first round game. So those are some of the boys basketball brackets of interest. On the girls' side, uh, Kenyon Wanamingo lost out to Fillmore Central in the second round of action after a number 12 seed in the tournament. The final four for girls' basketball 1A with games uh, Saturday at the Mayo Civic Center is number one rated Goodview against Spring Grove and Hayfield against Rushford Peterson. That's the final four in 1A girls' basketball. Kenyon Wanamingo has eight wrestlers that will begin there competition at the X tomorrow. Good luck to those eight Kenyon Wanamingo Knights at State Wrestling tomorrow. Do some good things tomorrow and advance on to Saturday as well. That'll wrap up on your Security State Bank of Kenyon halftime report. Our stats of the game gave you a whole bunch of stats here at halftime thanks to H&R Block, Owatonna, Lakeville, Faribo. Starting lineup is brought to you by Kenyon Ace Hardware. And it appears that both teams are going with their starters that started the game. Kenyon Wanamingo with Tanner Hedin, Eli Hedin, Mason Steberg, and Mills. And for Mabel Canton, Larson, Snell, Underbaki, Tolofsrud, and Erickson are the five out there for the Cougars. Second half is now underway. Cougars are going left to right. Little stutter step out of the corner for Underbaki. He was going to take a shot, elected not to. Got it inside to Erickson. Now it's outside to Larson on the left wing side. His shot is blocked. That's a clean block by Joseph Mills. And we've got to charge Mabel Canton with a missed three-pointer on that play. Now they maintain possession of the ball. Long inbound. There's a collision. And this is going to be a foul on Joe Mills. 
So that'll put the shot clock at 35 because it's a backcourt inbound for Mabel Canton. Just underway with the second half on the mighty 920. KDHL, Faribault, Minnesota, 97.9 FM. Roy Koenig on the coverage. Look forward to hearing Gordy's voice again at some point when he's ready to grab a microphone again. As uh, the Cougars player drives in under Baki, handed off to Erickson. A lot of shot uh, clock time for them to work with. Larson. It's a big lead for Kenyon Wanamingo, but there's a lot of basketball yet to play, and I've already mentioned that they have the ability to score points. Five on the shot clock. The shot away misses. Rebounded by Hadeen. So 0 for 2 to start the second half for uh, Mabel Canton, who struggled to shoot in the first half. Low post, a dribble, a turn, a hook shot, missed. Offensive rebound, up and through. Steberg on the offensive rebound put back basket for Kenyon Wanamingo and now 52 to 29. We had a really hectic pace at times in the first half. Erickson drives, flings it over to Underbaki. He works it back to the low post to Erickson. Comes out here, Snell, free throw line extended to the right. Now Underbaki top of the key, 11 seconds to shoot. Underbaki threaded the pass through. That was a beautiful pass to Erickson for the first points of the second half for Mabel Canton, 52-31. Not quite two minutes into the second half here at the Castle. 21-point lead, just as it was at halftime for Kenyon Wanamingo. Winner advances to Monday at 6, probably to play Blooming Prairie, the top seed. And uh, hacked pretty hard on his shot is Eli Hadeen. The eighth grader will go to the free throw line. He checks his nose to see if it's bleeding as he gets smacked pretty good by Riley Snell. It's a first foul on him, first on the uh, Cougars in the second half. No one in foul trouble. In fact, only two fouls have been called on uh, Mabel Canton for the night. Free throw good. Uh, who's at the line again? It is Eli Hadeen at the line. First free throw good, 53-31. Second free throw misses. Rebound taken by Larson. And the Cougars in the front court driving in right side. Snell cut off. Larson now straight on three. Missed it. Rebound tap once. And taken down by Tanner Hadeen off the missed three. Over two minutes gone by second half. Still a 22-point lead now. That shot missed and rebounded by Larson. Off the miss in the lane, a pass deflected out of bounds. Nice job by Eli Hedin. Ball will still be Mabel Canton's. And the inbound in the front court. Lots of time still to go on the shot clock. Problem for Mabel Canton is they're down by 22 points in the second half. Driving up the lane, doesn't like the look. Turn around, jumper short. Rebound torn down by Mason off the miss. One for five in the second half here so far for Mabel Canton. Just a tough night shooting the ball for the Cougars. Head fake by Mason. Fired opposite low post. Shot misses and then rebound by Underbaki. So that time it was a close in shot. And Mason, uh, might have been Steberg actually, that had a good look, just missed it. And now a pass that's tipped by Kenyon Wanamingo. It stays Mabel Canton ball. Mabel Canton attacking the basket to my right. They're dressed in the white Blue numbers, red trim. The Knights are in red. Black numbers, white trim here in this final game of the season at Kenyon Wanamingo. Next round is in Rochester. Straight on three, good look. Shot missed, rebound high in the air, and in the effort to jab it to somebody on his team, Larson jabs it out of bounds. It'll be Kenyon Wanamingo ball. And in the second half, Mabel Canton is 0 for 3 on threes. Uh, now a steal. And a basket is good for Tolofsrud. Only the fourth turnover of the game on Kenyon Wanamingo. They're trying to generate a few extra possessions. Mabel Canton, pass. Knights in the front court. That's handed off. Hadeen to Hadeen. Tanner passes inside Steberg. Outside for Mills. 14 and a half to go second half. 20-point lead for the Knights. Mills on the dribble. Uses it up. Tanner Hadeen, 10 seconds to shoot in the lane. Mills, ball handed off to Mason. Six to shoot. Mason weaves his way in, waits for a defender to get in the air, and stealing the ball out of his hands was Erickson, but apparently Erickson made contact with the player 
And Erickson called on the foul, his first, team second. And at the free throw line is Mason. Meanwhile, Coach Larson wanted to visit with the official about that play, feeling that his player was making a clean steal. Free throw good for Mason. That gives him eight points in the game. 54-33. Uh, Second free throw coming. And missed it. Rebounded by Underbaki. One, two, three, four for seven free throw shooting for Kenyon Wanamingo. There's a little bit of a kind of a, a pass off the hip. It's stolen by Kenyon Wanamingo and the third turnover of the game for Mabel Canton. That number sounds too low to be accurate, but that's what I've got. Long three-point try misses. Rebounded by Snell. Off the uh, miss by Kenyon Wanamingo. Turnaround jumper at this end misses. Nice offensive rebound by Underbaki. But as he's trying, or Tolips it actually, but as he's trying to maintain possession of it, he tosses it to Kenyon Wanamingo. At the other end, across uh, post pass is stolen away by Mabel Canton. And Erickson hustles to the other end, waits for the defense to fly by, and banks it up and in. 54-35, it's a 19-point lead for the Knights. A little out of control on the dribble was Mills. He then used up the dribble and tossed the ball over to Mason. 13-15 to go, Knights by 19. Tanner Hedin underneath the hoop. Tosses the ball out to Steberg. Steberg in the lane, shovels it over to Mills. Worked into the right corner to Mason. Mason to Steberg. Gets a screen from Hedin. Turns, shoots, missed it. Sharp rebound. Grabbed by Eli Hedin. And then there's a foul. A foul whistled against, is it Snell? His second, third foul on Mabel Canton. Coming into the game is Hirschberger, as well as Kale Tolofsrud. Checking into the game is Oliver Bauer, a six foot four freshman. Six foot three, it says in the program. I found six foot four online, but either way, maybe he's grown an inch this season. Inside Bauer, outside, three-pointer, brings in for Steber. His second three of the game, 57, 35, 12, 45 to go. Moving in, left side, forgot the basketball, and turned over by Mabel Canton. Can you run him and go on a rush into the front court? Steberg gives to Bauer. Bauer looking for somewhere to go with it, and he tosses it out to Eli Hedin. That ball is handed off to Mason for three. A line drive three for Zach Mason. Now 60 to 35. So 25 point lead. I think 26 was the biggest lead in the first half if I have my notes correct. H&R Block, Owatonna Faribault Lakeville presenting those stats of the game. This will be Hirschberger. Nope, nope. Is it uh, 23? Yeah, it was 23. So that was Hirschberger on the basket, his first of the game. 60 to 37, backcourt pressure. Kenyon Wanamingo breaks it. They find Bauer all by himself, absolutely by himself. Underneath the hoop, 62 to 37. Three-point try, miss. Tap out, rebounded by Snell. Off the three-point miss. Now a straight-on look for Larson. For, well, that shot must have been uh, deflected, and it is out of bounds. But still 0 for 5 on three-point shooting in the second half for Mabel Canton. They were only 4 for 19 in the first half on threes. 11.37 to go, 62 to 37, Kenyon Wanamingo. Trying to get that date again with Blooming Prairie, a likely winner in that other first-round game on this part of the bracket. They're playing Bethlehem Academy, the number uh, 17 seed tonight at that new gym at BP. Inside, too strong on that contested shot. The rebound is Hedin. Eli Hedin off the miss in close by Mabel Canton. Taking his time into the front court is Steberg. Steberg uses up the dribble. New on the floor is Carroll. He came in at the last opportunity along with Bauer a minute ago. Nice job by, oh, and then the shot misses for Carroll. Offensive rebound, however, by Hedin. And then the three-point try missed. Offensive rebound up and in for Bauer. So Bauer gets a rebound on that miss. Now 64-37, under 11 minutes to play in the second half. Going in is under Baki. That's cut off. He gets the ball out to Tolofsrud. Fires a pass right side. Larson goes to the opposite low post. Hirschberger contested, missed the shot. Great defensive pressure 
put on that time by Mason. And then one of his buddies grabbed the rebound. Hadim, meanwhile, loses the ball. He kind of uh, tumbled down. He looks all right. Looked like he went down awkwardly. Turnover on Kenyon Wanamingo. Handed off Hirschberger. Outside, left side, Snell. A shot is blocked. Oh, my. Steberg with that blocked shot. And then taking it hard up the lane is Underbaki. He scores. So there was a rebound in there for Mabel Canton, but a second blocked shot on a three-point try as... Uh, Kenyon Wanamingo's defense has been fantastic in this game. We do have a timeout on the floor, so we'll go ahead and pause for a moment here as well. 10.08 to play, 64-39, Kenyon Wanamingo. Back in the 1920s, when an entrepreneur came to town to seek their dream, they needed three things, a place to stay, a knowledgeable banker, and an account with First United Bank. Today, First United Bank in Faribault and Owatonna is still helping young people who are starting out. First United Bank has grown to the size it is today by giving sound financial advice and personal service to its customers for over 100 years. That's why First United Bank is important for young families today. At First United Bank, they didn't invent personal service, they just never forgot got it member fdic thank you to our sponsors including kenyon ace hardware milo peterson ford h and r block owatonna faribault lakeville security state bank of kenyon a sponsor as well ball belongs to kenyon wanamingo up 64 to 39 under 10 minutes to go hooked inside to bauer bauer then goes across the lane it's deflected and out of bounds deflected then it goes off the leg of a knight out of bounds, it'll belong to Mabel Canton. The lead, however, is 25 points for Kenyon Wanamingo. Looking to keep the pedal to the metal, knowing Mabel Canton can put up points in a hurry if they start connecting. But at this point, they're 0 for 6 on three-pointers in the second half. A foul is going to lead to two free throws here for Tyler Larson, a 10-point average per game, but held to three points so far in this one. Foul is on uh, Carroll, his first, team second. Free throw up and good for Tyler Larson. Free throw shooting, uh, looks like four out of seven for Mabel Canton as a team. Second free throw coming here for Larson in a moment, 64 to 40. 64 to 40. Free throw misses, rebound Mason. Mason's got about seven rebounds in the game. Long pass ahead, deflected, but then lost out of bounds by Mabel Canton. Underbaki deflected it, then it went off Larson out of bounds. So it stays Kenyon Wanamingo ball. Up right now by 24 points, 9.33 on the clock. Inbound to Tanner Hedin, gets the ball out to Mills. Mills goes back to Mason for three. Mason has his third three. It's 67 to 40, which I believe is the biggest lead of the game for Kenyon Wanamingo now with 9.15 to play in the game. Pass across to Underbaki. He'll drive in by Bauer, give it down low. Nice uh, um, uh, patience by Erickson waiting for the defender to fly by. 67-42, we got a blocking foul on Larson, Tyler Larson trying to make things difficult for Kenyon Wanamingo getting up the floor. Steberg had taken a break, he's back in. Mason will go grab a seat. Hirschberger checks back into the game. He will replace Larson. Larson uh, just picked up his, let's use a foul on, Larson his third. All right, so Larson his third. That's the fourth foul of the second half on Mabel Canton. We're under nine minutes to go. Open for a three, missed it. Long rebound comes out to Erickson. Missed three that time by Kenyon Wanamingo. Ball handed off to Underbaki, lets it go. Missed it, rebounded by Steberg on the rebound on the missed three. Steberg in the left corner, got it from uh, Carroll, who was deep inside, but couldn't do anything with it. Steberg for three, shot short. Good hustle by Tanner Dean to try to get to that three, seeing that it was offline. But it fell off his hands out of bounds, so it belongs to Mabel Canton with under eight and a half to go in the game. Mabel Canton trying to fight back from a huge deficit. 67-42. The Knights here in the castle on top. 
Hunter Bakke, STS Tolifsrud with the shot miss and a tap goes into the hands of Bauer off the missed jumper on the baseline by Caden Tolifsrud. 27 points per game on average. He's at 13 points in this game with eight minutes to play. 25 point lead for the Knights and Tanner Adin dribbling up the, the uh, lane had it knocked away from him, but he picked it up again and passed it outside. Line drive three-point attempt is uh, missed, but the rebound is tracked down by Mills in the corner. Shot missed by Carroll. Now Steberg with the shot. That one misses, and Hirschberger grabs the rebound on that missed three. Seven and a half to go. Shoveled over to Snell on the right side. He'll drive in. He'll elevate, miss the shot. Long rebound comes out to uh, Hirschberger. And then a pass is deflected by the Knights. It'll stay Mabel Canton ball. Halftime score was 50 to 29, Kenyon Wanamingo. 67 42 now with 7.25 to go. Bauer and Carroll come off. Back to that. Uh, well, actually, uh, yeah, I guess it's the starting crew back in there for Coach Lurkin. And that will be an inbound violation. I don't think they got it in in time. And so the ball turns over to Kenyon Wanamingo. A couple of quick passes. They break the full court pressure from the Cougars. And on the low dribble is Mason. Crossover now hands the ball off to Mills. Joe Mills, a junior, gives that one to Steberg, a senior. Now Tanner Hedin, he's a junior. They go inside to Mason. Mason, little duck under, banks it off the glass. Zach Mason with two more. 69-42. Mason having a very strong night. I'll add up his numbers. Look to all these stats. h and Block stats of the game in the post-game show. Good job finding Erickson. Erickson banks it up and in. 69-44 with 6.45 remaining. And Kenyon Wanamingo up. Tanner Adine lobs it into the front court. Caught by Mills. Mills finds Steberg down low. Out. Open look for Mason. And he hits it. Boy, Mason... That's four three-pointers in the game for Mason. Now 72 to 44, Kenyon Wanamingo. Larson passes over to Snell on the left side. Now under Baki, top of the key, guarded by Hedin. A jump stop and a pass outside. Another three-pointer on its way. That's good for three for Ty Larson. That is the first three of the second half. Then a jump ball. Jump ball is indicated. I didn't see precisely what happened there. Jump ball does belong to Kenyon Wanamingo, but it uses up that arrow. That was the first three-pointer made in the second half for Mabel Canton after seven misses. So they're one for eight on three-point shooting in the second half. And Kenyon Wanamingo, by my count, is four for nine. Mabel Canton going for the steal, and that will be... Wait, wait, wait. I was about to say they did execute the turnover but one official had a different angle on it than the other. And this call is beneficial to Kenyon Wanamingo. The fans in the gym certainly love it. And I think it's the right call as well. One official on the backside didn't see it as well as the other official. And that's why you've got a three-man crew. And a little bit of a bad pass that was almost turned over by the Knights. Under six minutes to go, 72 to 47. This will stay night ball. It was tipped out of bounds by Snell. So what is this, a 25-point lead again? 27 is the biggest that the Knights have had here in the second half. 26 points was the biggest lead they had in the first half. Fired inside, and then Steberg, who took a dribble, instead of taking it up right away, will get fouled and go to the free throw line. Steberg's first trip to the line. He's got 14 points in the game, 72-47. Knights on top, 548 to play. Free throw misses. Free throw shooting, not real strong for either team in this game. Steberg's next free throw is good. So 73. 47, 5.45 to go. Under A couple of passes, Larson, top of the key. Ball knocked away by Eli Hedin, but still maintained by Mabel Canton to a cutter. Under Bakke, basket good, and he got fouled. Nice vision that time by Erickson to hit Under on the uh, cut. 
And the foul is on Colton Steberg, his first, team's third, an and one opportunity for Underbaki. Missed it. And in the fight for the rebound on the missed free throw is a foul on Mabel Canton. And on Ty Larson, that is foul number four. So the fourth foul on one of the starters, and now full court pressure being put on by Mabel Canton. Knights get it in, fire a pass ahead. Steber dribbles into the front court, pulls up free throw line, passes left side, that's Eli Hedin. They move the ball around to Mason, back to Mason on the left wing. No hurry for the Knights. They want to get a good looking shot in the lane. That's a pretty good looking shot. There's those points in the paint that Coach Lurkin mentioned. A nice feed, a good finish by Mason, 75. 49, five minutes to go. It's all Knights. Underbaki drives in the lane, contested shot, and there is a foul. There was a follow-up opportunity coming, but the play was over on the foul called on Zach Mason, his third, team's fourth. It's indicated it is not a shooting foul, so an inbound opportunity or an inbound play for Mabel Canton underneath the offensive hoop. Tanner Dean goes to take a seat as Logan Carroll, the senior, checks in in his place. 23 on the shot clock for Mabel Canton underneath the offensive hoop. They're down by 26 points with 4.45 to play. Underbaki bangs in the low post. Carroll took uh, the uh, defensive brunt of that. Shot misses from out top. Shot misses from the left corner. So that's a couple of uh, three-point tries that missed. Granted, there was an offensive rebound in there as well for Mabel Canton as the clock goes below four and a half minutes to go. 26-point lead for Kenyon Wanamingo in this second round. 1A section playoff game. Winner goes to Rochester Auditorium at the Mayo Civic Center Monday night at 6 p.m., probably to play Blooming Prairie. Three-pointer, line drive three by Zach Mason. Goodness, 78-49. And I think this is now the biggest lead of the game. In fact, we're closing in on a running time situation, not too far off of that. Freeing himself as Larson gets a little bit of a groan from the Kenyon Wanamingo fans that felt there was a push off. Under four minutes to play. The lead right now, 27 points, 78-51. Carroll swings it left side for Eli Hedin. He's the only Hedin on the floor. And he's fouled as he goes to the basket by Hirschberger, it appears. Hirschberger, his first. Team seventh. This is a two-shot foul anyway. At the line is Eli Hedin. One for two on free throws. First shot, good. 79-51. Couple of subs come in as Erickson is back into the game. Tolestrud back into the game for Babel Canton. New on the floor is Colton Tolestrud. That second shot misses and Underbaki gets the rebound. So 79 51. Missed shot by. Mabel Canton, rebound was taken by, I think it was Carroll. And then a jump ball here at the other end of the floor that belongs to Mabel Canton. Tyler Larson, the junior with four fouls, will check back into the game. They want his offense. He averages double digits a game. So with four fouls, he checks back in. 321 remaining in the second half, 79-51. It is going to take quite the rally, however, for Mabel Canton, even as they do manage their one of their top players battling some foul trouble. It's going to take some big-time shots. Tolifsrud's shot is short, and Hedin can't quite save it from going out of bounds. So it stays Mabel Canton ball, 25 to shoot, 310 remaining in the second half. Baseline left looking for the inbound is Snell. Long inbound is stolen by Carroll. 
Carroll races down the floor, forces up a shot, draws the foul on Tulifsrud. So good job by Carroll. And he'll go to the line. The foul on Colton Tulifsrud, a senior. It's his first and the team's eighth. Two shots uh, upcoming for Logan Carroll, who has two points in the game. Free throw short. Stay tuned for the H&R Block stats. H&R Block knows their numbers. Get your maximum refund. H&R Block, Faribault, Owatonna, Lakeville. H&R Block. Keys to the game brought to you by Milo Peterson Ford. Rebounding a big key in this one. Points in the paint a big key in this one. In comments from the coaches. And both of those numbers have gone heavily in the favor of Kenyon Wanamingo. Second free throw good. The Knights have made the 80-point mark. 80-51 to 51 with three minutes remaining. Crossover dribble by Underbaki, top of the lane, uses that up, goes to Snell on the left wing. Now Larson for a three. Larson skims that off the rim. A rebound. Let's see who belongs. Uh, the ball will belong to Kenyon Wanamingo. So it was a missed three. Frankly, it looked like it went off the Kenyon Wanamingo guy's face out of bounds, but the ruling is it was last touched by Mabel Canton, and the Kenyon Wanamingo fans will take that one any day of the week. We're down to 2.50 to go in the game. The inbound comes to Carroll. Carroll gives the ball back to Mason, who put it into play. Mason back to Carroll, almost stolen. Carroll gets into the front court with 2.40 to go. He's looking at Steberg. Instead, he goes to Mason. Mason holds the ball above his head, goes in the left corner. Mills, Mills goes in, goes to the rack. Missed the shot, rebound by Underbaki. A long pass to the other end. The shot is good for Erickson. 80 to 53, 220 to go. Pass, uh, Steberg threads it over to Mills. Mills gets clobbered down, but a couple of the Cougars help Mills back to his feet. Foul will send him to the free throw line. The foul is on Tolifsrud, Colton. And I think this is a one and one, I think. And coming into the game, is Benjamin Short, the 6'1 senior, gets a nice round of applause as he comes onto the floor for Kenyon Wanamingo. At the line is Mills. Front end of the one and one is good. Mills had a few big baskets in that first half. He had a couple of those offensive putbacks, as I recall. Had six points in the first half. This is his first point of the second half, but Zach Mason has gone wild in this second half with four three-pointers in the second half alone. Steberg, the senior, checks out for the final time. Well, possibly for the final time as he's getting high fives from everyone on the bench. Big lead here for Kenyon Wanamingo. Final game in their home gym. Both free throws are made. And once again, the friendly roll on the rim helping out the Knights. 82 to 53 with 2.10 to go. Tolif's route at the other end goes out to Underbaki. Underbaki takes it inside the lane, rattles that one through. 82 to 55, two minutes to go. And early in this game, it was 7-4, and I know that's extremely early. Mabel Canton had the lead. Kenyon Wanamingo went on a 27-2 run, and it feels like they've hardly looked back. Yeah, there was a run late in the first half by Mabel Canton, but even at that, they were down by 21 at the break. There's a pass that's a little off mark. Mills intended that one for Benjamin Short. Ben Short, certainly. Couple of players check out of the game. Adine and Mills coming into the game is Kyle Vukulic. Also new into the game is Isaac Hadeen. As we're down to a minute 30 to go, Canyon Wanamingo. They'll be playing Monday night at 6 at the Mayo Civic Auditorium in Rochester. Jump stop, Tolifsrud shot is in. That's Kale Tolifsrud with his first basket, 82 to 57, 110 to go. Right corner, ball passed around. Tanner Hadeen, left hand uh, dribble, looking for short underneath the hoop. Can't get a pass through to him, one minute to go. It's a short in the right corner, lob pass, intercepted by Kale Tolifsrud. Tanner Hadeen hustles back, forces a bad shot, and committed a foul as well, so free throws are coming. Weideman, by the way, Bodie Weideman has checked into the game. He's a junior for Mabel Canton. The foul on Tanner Hadeen is his third. 
It's the fifth foul on the team here in the second half with 52 seconds to go in the ball game. Tolis Root at the line. Kale's first free throw is good. So 82 to 58. Another sub comes into the game. This is freshman Landon Johnson coming in. So it is an entirely a reserve lineup as Coach Lurkin walks down the bench with his freshman Bauer. Second free throw good as well, 82 to 59 with 45 seconds to go. Coming from behind, Tolis Root comes up with the steal, but then the ball is uh, uh, past the waiting arms of Hunsacker and it stays Kenyon Wanamingo basketball. Another sub coming in, this is Vangsness, a sophomore, entering for Mabel Canton, both coaches giving as many kids a chance to play as possible as we're down to the final minute of this section playoff game. Ben Short comes out of the left corner, dribbles in the lane. He kind of bodies up for position, missed the shot, rebounded by Vangsness. He goes to Tolofsrud with the ball. Dribbling into the front court is Cale Tolofsrud with a half minute to go in the ball game. Canyon Wanamingo up big. Right side here with it now is Vangsness. He'll give that ball to Hunsacker. Hunsacker with 20 seconds to go in the game. His pass, oh, stolen. That pass was stolen by Vukulic. And at the other end, there's a foul as uh, Hedin, this would be Isaac Hedin, was going to the hoop. So Isaac will make his way to the free throw line. For two shots here, foul is whistled on Kale Tulifsrud, his second, team's 10th. Two-shot foul for Isaac Hedin. A lot of stats to get to in the upcoming uh, post-game show, H&R Block stats of the game. Free throw misses for Hedin. 12 seconds to go in this one. 82 to 59. Kenyon Wanamingo. And the free throw is through. 83 to 59. 10 seconds remaining. A three pointer at the other end is off the front of the rim. Offensive rebound with the ball is uh, Manzanares. And at the buzzer, is that good or not? Did they count that shot or not? I, I don't think it counted. 83 to 59 is your final score. 83, 59 victory for Kenyon Wanamingo. They close out the home season in style, picking up a big, solid playoff victory. We'll take a break, get into the uh, first segment of our post-game show right after this on the Mighty 920 KDHL, Faribault, Minnesota. Faribault Foods has been a pillar of the Faribault community since 1895. As a leading manufacturer of high-quality canned foods, they're dedicated to providing wholesome and delicious recipe-ready food. Keep your pantry stocked with canned beans and vegetables for easy meals at your fingertips. Use Mrs. Grimes' beans in your favorite soups, chilies, or tacos. And butter kernel vegetables as a side dish your family will love. For more meal inspiration, visit MrsGrimesBeans.com or ButterKernel.com. H&R Block offices in Oatana, Faribault, and Lakeville remind you now is the time to get your paperwork in order for tax season. Book your appointment at one of the offices where in-person or drop-off filing is available. No computer program can ask every single possible tax question. The tax professionals in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana average 10 years experience, and you can request the same preparer every year. File your way at H&R Block offices in Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. Every part counts at Amesbury Truth. And the most important one is the part you'll play when you join their team. As the leading provider of window and door products in North America, Amesbury Truth has a part for you. Right now, they're hiring, and those positions come with competitive wages, benefits, and plenty of opportunities, too. So you never stop growing. Isn't it time you open the door to a career at Amesbury Truth? Get details and apply online at amesburytruth.com slash careers. Ace is the only national retailer that carries Benjamin Moore paint. Now, Benjamin Moore's premium quality and huge selection of colors will be right in your neighborhood. Along with the award-winning service and advice, Ace has always provided for your paint projects. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their paint, Kenyon Ace Hardware has all the accessories you need also. Brushes, rollers, ladders, you name it, in Kenyon, Ace is truly the place. 
So 83 to 59 is the final score. Kenyon Wanamingo with the victory, improving to 16 and 11 on the season. Mabel Canton ends their season at 14 and 14. The uh, Cougars started out strong, hitting some shots early, built a nice little seven to four lead, but then they couldn't hit a shot uh, for the longest time. It was so difficult for Mabel Canton. They had some good looks, just it wasn't going down. And uh, Kenyon Wanamingo went on a 27 to two run. And that turned that early deficit into a 31 nine lead. And from there, they led by double digits the rest of the way um Mabel Canton pulled within 44 to 29 late in the first half they went on let's see what was this uh, from that point they went on a 12 four run so it made a little bit of a dent in the deficit did Mabel Canton but then the first half ended on a 6-0 run for Kenyon Wanamingo they had a 21 point lead at the half and in the second half, Mabel Canton continued to struggle shooting the three. They missed their first seven three-point tries in a game they're trying to climb back from a big deficit. And at that point, from that point on, it just was a matter of time and a matter of what that final score would be. And that final score is 83 to 59, which moves Kenyon Wanamingo to the Mayo Civic Auditorium Monday night, 6 p.m., presumably against Blooming Prairie. BP, the number one seed, number five rated team in the state, hosting Bethlehem Academy tonight assuming certainly a Blooming Prairie victory and that uh, that game that's a mismatch of sorts. And that would be a rematch for Kenyon Wanamingo. And the Knights, they split with Blooming Prairie during the season, winning 73-60 to on Monday, January 29th, one of just two losses on the season by BP, and then losing a competitive game, 65-57, just last Friday. Uh, Friday the 23rd, 65-57, Blooming Prairie got the win. And now it would certainly seem with uh, Kenyon Wanamingo's victory, they're going to get a third crack at Blooming Prairie, and it will not be easy, most certainly. That's going to be a really tough game at the Mayo Civic Center uh, Auditorium in Rochester on Monday. Seniors for Mabel Canton who played their final game, Riley Snell, Caden Tolefsrud, Zachary Manzarez got a chance to take a shot there at the end. Colton Tolefsrud, a senior. Hayden Erickson, a senior, and Tristan Hunsacker, a senior as well. So a handful of those seniors that wrap up their prep career with the uh, Cougars and a 14-14 and season for Mabel Canton. Uh, big thanks to Federated Mutual Insurance, Faribault Foods, First United Bank, Faribault Owatonna, as well as Amesbury Truth among our sponsors. We've got a little bit more to get to and get to the individual scoring when we continue on the post-game show from the Castle in Kenyon, where the Knights roll to an 83-59 win over Mabel Canton. We'll be back on the Mighty 920 KDHL. Federated Mutual Insurance Company is hiring in Owatonna and Mankato. Federated Insurance offers full training, competitive pay and benefits, plenty of room for growth, and an unmatched company culture. We are seeking talented professionals who are comfortable working with multiple computer systems and who have a strong attention to detail. No insurance experience is required. Join a company that values hard work and continues to thrive and grow. Learn more and apply now at federatedinsurance.com. Milo Peterson Ford in Kenyon has been family owned and operated since 1961. They value every single customer. More new vehicles are arriving on their lot every day. An excellent selection of pre-enjoyed vehicles are available. No pressure there either. Speaking of pressure, remember Milo Peterson Ford is a place to go for tires for your vehicles also. They have all the name brands. Parts and service department is second to none at Milo Peterson Ford. Highway 56 North, Kenya. H&R Block offices in Oatana, Faribault, and Lakeville remind you now is the time to get your paperwork in order for tax season. Book your appointment at one of the offices where in-person or drop-off filing is available. No computer program can ask every single possible tax question. The tax professionals in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana average 10 years experience, and you can request the same preparer every year. File your way at H&R Block offices in Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. All 
right, a couple of final notes here. We'll get you a scoring rundown on this one. I'm just going to go top to bottom in my scorebook. Want to say thanks as well. Milo Peterson Ford presenting those keys to victory, keys to the game. Kenyon Ace Hardware on the starting lineup sponsorship. Security State Bank um, of Kenyon was our halftime sponsor, H&R Block. Owatonna Faribault Lakeville presenting the stats of the game. So how about the numbers of the game? They know their numbers. I don't know if I know my numbers here at the castle, but they know their numbers at H&R Block. Check with them over tax time, which is oh so quickly approaching. H&R Block, Faribault, Owatonna, and Lakeville. For Mabel Canton in an 83-59 Kenyon Wanamingo victory, four points for Kale Tolofsrud. Nine points in the game for Tyler Larson. Snell did not score in this game, eight point average uh, per game, but no points tonight for him. 20 points for Isaac Underbaki, which is a bit above his average. And Caden Tolofsrud, who had 11 at the half, averages 27 points per game, held to 13 points in the game. And 11 points for Erickson, Hayden Erickson with 11. Hirschberger had two, and that should be the scoring for Mabel Canton. For Kenyon Wanamingo, Tanner Hadeen, two points. And it was kind of a cool basket. It was on a missed free throw, offensive rebound, put back basket for Tanner Hadeen. Two points for him. Logan Carroll had three points in the game. Six points, two threes in the first half. Nice shooting by the junior, Ross Aldorfer. 24 points for Zach Mason in the game. Had four three-pointers in the second half, five three-pointers in the game. Mason with a big, big game today for Kenyon Wanamingo. Steberg ends up with 15 points in the game. He had nine in the first half, added a three, and a few other points in the second half, 15 for Steberg. Eli Hadeen had a big 14 point first half, added uh, two free throws in the second half, so 16 points for Eli Hadeen, the eighth grader. Joe Mills, uh, he goes eight points, six points in the first half, two for two from the free throw line in the second. Bauer, four points off the bench in the first, four more in the second for an eight-point night. And Isaac Hadeen, one for two on free throws late in that second half. So three players in double figures for Kenyon Wanamingo. They score 83 points in the game, 83-59 to 59 winners over Mabel Canton in this second round Section 1A boys basketball playoff game. And Kenyon Wanamingo has put up some big points on the season. They have made it to 80 points a couple of other times and actually made 90 points as well early in the season against Rochester STEM School. So it's a team that has put points on the board. Um, they're going to need to put points on the board Monday night. The presumption is they'll be playing Blooming Prairie. They beat BP 73-60 to earlier this season in late January, but then lost a lower-scoring game to Blooming Prairie last Friday in BP's new gym, 65-57. Uh, to But a rematch is looking uh, to be all queued up for Monday night at 6 at the auditorium in Rochester. So once again, a thanks to our sponsors, Faribault Foods, Federated Mutual Insurance, H&R Block, Owatonna Faribault Lakeville, Milo Peterson Ford, Kenyon Ace Hardware, First United Bank, Amesbury Truth, and Security State Bank of Kenyon. My name is Roy Koenig. Be sure to follow along at kdhlradio.com for details on other upcoming games. And uh, be sure to utilize that online scoreboard on the KDHL app and at kdhlradio.com. The Knights close out their home season in victorious fashion, winning this playoff game 83-59 to over Mabel Canton and book their ticket, punch their ticket to the Rochester Mayo Civic Auditorium for Monday night. Thanks for listening and good night from the Capitol. The Security State Bank of Kenyon is celebrating their 90th year in business. Born in 1934 out of the Great Depression failure of three independent banks, Security State Bank of Kenyon was chartered July 23, 1934 and has been delivering community banking services ever since. Still family owned and operated, Security State Bank of Kenyon is dedicated to the financial needs of area farmers, businesses and individuals. The Security State Bank of Kenyon says personal service, it's our style. Member FBI I see an equal housing lender.
Just three words tell you everything you need to know. They tell you why we employ more than 2,000 workers at our factory in Virginia Beach and why over 10,000 local steel dealers are putting battery power in the hands of Americans. Just three words made in America. Real steel. Find yours at SteelUSA.com or even better, go to Kenyon Ace Hardware, a certified steel dealer. Majority of steel products sold in America are made in America of U.S. and foreign materials. Batteries and chargers are sourced internationally. 